Uh, let's talk about smartification. Smartification actually, according to many sources and the practices, refers to the uh, producing new or retrofitting existing uh, disconnected, usually or often disconnected assets, uh, providing sensors, providing wireless, providing all kind of connection uh, technologies and make it smart. So I didn't understand exactly what smart is. Maybe you can understand what smart is in comparison to what is a stupid is. Smart cities versus stupid cities. And this makes it much more even profound understanding. What do we mean actually with the smart cities or smart technologies where we talk about the uh, public space? So we use so many things. Uh, we have witnessed over this decade exactly uh, the use of uh, data, big data, the use of universal, uh, IoT, uh, local communication, uh, the Bluetooth, NFC, Wi-Fi, infrared, visual communication, and many others. Uh, the clouds, uh, the artificial intelligence, which is tremendous. Uh, this is really like a monster, the uh, introduction of uh, artificial intelligence, even in design, architecture, planning, public space planning. Uh, it becomes really a totally new achievement for humankind. Intelligence tools are frequently increasing every day. GPT, which is also another uh, monster that is uh, coming, um, so you can do whatever you like. Chat GPT, uh, Mid Journey, which is incredibly sources of millions of images, can be composed into a totally new reality, a new reality that is uh, depend on a previous reality or the past reality, which is a stupid reality. But instead of having I mean, this, you can ask whatever of designs. Uh, not only for big environment, not only for architecture, but also for fashion design, for cooking, for uh, interior design, for so many aspects you can use it. Uh, and of course, uh, the uh, very widespread uh, uh, and very, uh, really revolutionary invention of the low code or no code, uh, which enabled people to develop their own codes. So what all of this can do with the public space? Uh, with the public space, there are uh, recently an interplay, interaction between the smart uh, solutions, smart urban solution, you can call it, and the public places in, uh, in the city, with our existing or new existing public spaces to be uh, uh, retrofitted or rehabilitated or revitalization, revitalized, uh, or new to be invented and to be uh, planned, like what uh, the uh, excellent example we have seen it in uh, near Marrakesh. Uh, this is uh, actually, it's, it's quite interesting experience, quite in, interesting field of intervention. The new one, challenge for the city and challenge, we know, also challenge for the ICT uh, uh, solutions. Uh, mobile phones, smartphones, smart apps, uh, smart waste management, so many applications, uh, we can understand that. So first of all, before, before getting into intervention with the public space exactly, uh, why do we need a smart place? Why do we need a smart public place? Is it really needed to have that? Or just a field of applications that we try, like what we have tried before? Is it new for us? It's not quite new. Medina is very famous for, uh, for using smart applications since 25 years old. All of you have seen the umbrellas surrounding the, uh, the Haram Plaza, surrounding the Prophet Mosque. Uh, this umbrella is really smart, in that, uh, uh, if we consider this definition, uh, as far as there are sensors, as there are sensors are um, uh, sensing the, uh, the uh, sun, ray, uh, sun, uh, the sun radiation, and the temperature when it is high, it is open automatically. The umbrella open automatically to provide shade uh, for the visitor underneath. Uh, most of the time, we see that it's uh, totally closed, but. Um, the principle is that this is a smart one that is interact with the, uh, with the temperature uh, through the sensors. Uh, similar things also like the, uh, the thermal counters uh, in, in Mecca, for instance. These are all uh, smart technologies that have been introduced 25 years old, maybe one of the first generations to be used. So we have to identify exactly what do we mean by smart and what do we mean by smartification of the public places before getting into a direct application of whatever of technologies, wonderful technologies we have it today. But do we really need it? This is an important question. The second thing, if we consider that we have what's so called 
smart public place. So uh, for planners, for uh, people who work with uh, city development and city planning, what does it mean? What, what kind of special conditions that is created by the smart uh, public places? Uh, functions, process of uh, uh, the space uh, formation itself, uh, how people can interact, uh, what about the principles that is embodied in the public spaces, uh, inclusiveness for instance, or privacy, or whatever other aspect. This is quite important. Uh, what do exactly and how this can uh, how this can be done? The shaping of places using the ICT uh, different solutions and how do we uh, interact with that? How can we follow that? How can we monitor that this is successful? This is uh, uh, needed or not? Uh, the before getting into uh, uh, some answers for that or some reflections on that, uh, we were talking always about a, a human-friendly city. A human-friendly city, which means that this is a smart uh, a city that is based on uh, human-friendly, which means that it's more people-centered uh, uh, smart city. Is it the same concept of the human-friendly city, that humanizing, humanized or humanizing cities? Uh, this is not sure. If this is the same concept, or this fits in a way or another uh, in, in uh, uh, in the same context, in the same scope, in the same objective, then uh, we got an agreement uh, to, uh, to start our journey how to smartify public spaces. Uh, if this is not quiet, and uh, this is an open site in a way or another, we should be very careful when applying uh, uh, comprehensive and essential aspects of smart solutions. So if we, uh, just to consider it, just to test it, uh, we explore the, uh, what we call it, uh, uh, humanizing the Medina uh, program. This is a program initiated by MDA in 2017. Uh, the program has a number of uh, objectives based on a specific set of principles. Um, and this principle actually has been explored and tested in a number of experiences over the past five years. It was very, most of them were, were very, very successful. Part of them still uh, under construction now and under development. Part of it uh, still also under planning. Uh, there's no room to, uh, to go through it, but uh, I, uh, I can imagine that you have been to Cuba Boulevard yesterday for the artistic show. Uh, meanwhile, we have also one, I think, about 300 meters from here. You can look around and to check part of these projects. Uh, the project actually has uh, three major fields of intervention. One of them is the you know, uh, revitalization and rehabilitation of uh, uh, old neighborhoods in Latina, providing with uh, uh, many solutions, actually many urban solutions. Uh, very little smart technologies have been introduced to it. Actually, it was not the scope. Now, we should use it in a way or another. The Cuba Boulevard, which is also a pedestrianized area, this is part of the uh, field, of field of intervention of the program. Uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, Boulevard actually extends from the Prophet Mosque to Cuba Mosque, about three kilometers long. And it has so many as activities, so many variations in uh, nature and the shapes and activities. And there are some uh, introduced uh, technologies, not that much, but uh, still at the beginning, this is a wide field uh, for practice, for introducing technologies. And uh, quite interesting is the Wadi, the uh, Wadi Akik, which is very close, as I said. Um, actually, an uh, interesting project to mitigate the uh, flood water that comes from the uh, uh, storm water, heavy rain, etc., and to mitigate it in a way or another. Meanwhile, also providing uh, a new lungs for the city and quite interesting, attractive public spaces. How can we use technology? How can we use smart technologies in mitigating this? So, uh, three major points I would like to reflect on is uh, when introducing these smart solutions to uh, public spaces, uh, the first one is how smart is smart? How smart is smart? It's what we mean exactly by smartification of public space when using it. Uh, we are not just a blind application of uh, whatever is smart. Uh, we should be very aware, very conscious about uh, the extent of the smart solutions and its compatibility, its uh, appropriateness to the uh, uh, objectives of the public space itself. But there is no one solution for all sizes. There are different. Uh, uh, situation, different context. So customization and adaptation of smart solutions is very important and very significant. Actually, it is a success or a failure factor in the whole process. The second thing is that the uh, smartification itself 
uh, should be smart enough in a way. It's not just a way to use like smart lighting, for instance, or uh, this kind of sets or cameras uh, controlled, uh, connected with uh, control rooms. But it's more than that. Uh, we are looking for something that can enhance and can improve, can support the essential qualities of public spaces, including privacy, livability, uh, many other uh, uh, features. Uh, and this must be the promise, which means that, in a way or another, we are converting the public spaces into what we can say self learning, learning systems, customized solutions more related to the functions and nature of public spaces and not, again, uh, there's no one solution for all sizes, for all situations. And the last thing is, which is very, very important actually, is the simplification of people themselves. People are using the space. So in, in my mobile phone and in your mobile phones, we have your functions. How many functions, how many apps are we using? How many apps in the, in the phone itself? Uh, in the iPhone, there are tens of thousands of features. I can't grasp maybe 5% or 7%, most of us uh, do not exceed uh, maybe uh, 10%. This is for the iPhone. How many uh, uh, apps? The apps that are on the App Store, for instance, exist 2 million apps. So do we really need that? Uh, what I mean is that this kind of solution should be also uh, be aware uh, for people to be aware of that, of the uh, functions. Are they really in need for millions? Are they really in need for uh, this kind of tremendous uh, uh, quality of applications, of uh, smart uh, uh, solutions, smart network solutions? Or should we be uh, uh, more precise and more uh, rationalized about what we are using and what, where is exactly uh, people can understand? Uh, uh, at the end, I have a number of questions I would like uh, to reflect on and would like to raise it for the uh, smart uh, cities expert and ICT technologies experts. Uh, is exactly uh, what are the implications, the consequences of using the smart cities, the smart solutions uh, in public spaces? Um, do we have a sort of uh, uh, evaluation uh, system or procedure, uh, monitoring, uh, post use uh, assessment? for the experience that we have done, we have done tremendous uh, uh, examples, an increasing one, Cyberjaya in, in Malaysia, uh, Master City, uh, in, uh, in other cities that are very similar, interesting uh, smart cities that have been done. Uh, did we have really uh, good conclusions, lesser learned out of them, so we can go further in a more sophisticated and more advanced solution? This is quite important uh, to, uh, to be done. Can we really uh, develop local uh, customized or local specific context related forms of applications, of smartness or smart applications, uh, which means that it's not one universal? I was uh, really very much in, uh, uh, surprised and uh, uh, like very, very much that Rasil, Rasil is very much close to Medina. Uh, context, uh, the issue of parking, as uh, my colleague Dr. Uh, 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 presented this uh, morning, it was, it was really very much customized to the context of Medina. This cannot be applied as it is in Riyadh, for instance, or cannot be applied. Although the theory is the same, but it is very much customized to the, not just the locations, but uh, to the culture itself, culture of parking, understanding. Uh, 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 where are the peak times of Ramadan or Hajj or uh, Friday uh, and so on. And this is exactly what we need to go through it, to customize things, to localize it in a way or another, to be in the culture, in the urban culture aspects of people. Uh, last one, how, at the end, how the smart systems can render public spaces and can render the uh, city at work. What kind of images are we producing for the cities at large and also for our public spaces to be changed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr.